Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, so let's talk about the Benjamins. To be put on the $100 bill, you have to be a pretty badass dude, right? And that man is Benjamin Franklin. So I'm going to hit you with one of his best quotes before we even get started. We're all born ignorant, but one must work hard to remain stupid. That's a good one, right? Uh, unfortunately, many people don't know much about uh, Ben Franklin besides, you know, signing the Declaration of Independence and the whole kite experiment thing. But there's a lot more to the man, and luckily for us, fortunately, he believed that you should recapture your life by writing it down and documenting it. So he left behind an autobiography, which gives us a ton of insight into his his private life, his values, his beliefs, and all that good stuff. Ben Franklin accomplished a lot in his life and we can learn a ton from him. He was an author, a scientist, a politician, a musician, a statesman, a diplomat, and an inventor. So a ton of stuff. He's someone we should all aspire to be like. And there's some great lessons in his autobiography that I've summarized for you in this video. Um, but first, let's briefly talk about, very briefly, about his life in general. So Ben Franklin was born in 1706. He was one of 17 children, which is a lot. Initially, he was going to be a minister, but he had such a great interest in reading and writing that he went to work for his brother as a printer instead. Ben didn't like working for his brother, so at the age of 16, he, he ran away to Philly. Uh, he worked for a printer in Philly for a while, and then he went to England. Unfortunately, he got stuck in England, and uh, with no way to get back, he was kind of stuck. So he started working for another printing shop until he could save up enough money. He worked really hard, and then he was able to get back to America. Once back in America, he worked for a couple more printers and then he decided to open up his own printing shop. The business did well over the years and Ben eventually started a gentleman's club, no, not that kind of gentleman's club, called Junto, where he and his friends discussed philosophy and science. Uh, the gentlemen in the club exchanged books and ideas and even started a private library. His company continued to grow and he wrote Poor Richard's Almanac, I'm sure you've heard of that. The Junto Club got bigger and they even started the first American Fire Department. Franklin then became the General Assembly Clerk and Postmaster. He advocated for a better military and better institutions for higher education. So, I mean, this guy did a ton of stuff. At this point, he had become a man of great influence. With his Junto Club, which he had expanded drastically, he founded the University of Pennsylvania. He also improved other public services like hospitals, paving roads, and road cleaning. During the French and Indian War, this was the war between England and France when America was still under English rule, Franklin even helped some of the generals get supplies and helped build forts in Pennsylvania to defend against the Native Americans. Franklin also drafted several proposals on how to fund colonial defense. He even had a proposal on colonial unity, which was ahead of its time, but that was shot down. Besides doing all this, he also invented several useful things, conducted experiments on electricity, and was made a member of the Royal Society. I mean, I don't even know how he could accomplish so much stuff. The autobiography ends in 1757. He lived until 1790. Unfortunately, he never got to finish it and write about all the great things that happened after 1757, which was a ton of stuff, but he was a busy man, I'm sure you can agree. Nevertheless, the book is still chock full of wisdom, so let's hit the lessons that I pulled out from Benjamin Franklin's autobiography. Number one, always be honest. And I quote Ben here, I grew convinced that truth, sincerity, and integrity in dealings between man and man, or women, were of the utmost importance to felicity of life. Ben Franklin had impeccable integrity. There are tons of examples throughout the book that show his integrity and how it impacted the rest of his life. People trusted him, and this changed his life in many, many ways. As they say, the bitterest truth is better than the sweetest lie. Number two, be humble. Besides having impeccable integrity, Franklin was also very humble. Integrity and humbleness kind of make a killer combo. Number three, always strive for self-improvement. When he was just 20 years old, he wrote down a list of 13 virtues that he wanted to live by. He focused on one virtue per week, and after 13 weeks, he would repeat the cycle. He was not perfect, but tried to improve himself all the time. This process of self-improvement was, as he says, one of his reasons for success. He was honest with himself about where he was lacking and monitored his progress. The language in his list for the 13 virtues is a little dated, but 
Think about the things on the list. These are the things that directly contributed to Benjamin Franklin's success. Number one, temperance. Eat not to dullness, drink not to elevation. Number two, silence. Speak not but what may benefit others or yourself and avoid trifling conversations. I like that one. Number three, order. Let all things have their place. Let each part of your business have its time. Number four, resolution. Resolve to perform what you ought. Perform without fail what you resolve. Number five, frugality. Make no expense but to do good to others or yourself. For example, wasting nothing. Number six, industry. Lose no time. Be always employed in something useful. Cut off all unnecessary actions. Number seven, sincerity. Use no hurtful deceit. Think innocently and justly. And if you speak, speak accordingly. Eight is justice. Wrong none by doing injuries or omitting the benefits that are your duty. Number nine is moderation. You want to avoid extremes. Forbear resenting injuries so much as you think they deserve. Number 10 is cleanliness. Tolerate no uncleanliness in body, clothes, or habitation. Number 11 is tranquility. Be not disturbed at trifles or at accidents common or unavoidable. A little stoicism there. Number 12, chastity. Never use venery but for health or offspring. Okay, interesting. Never to dullness, weakness, or the injury of your own or another's peace or reputation. Number 13 is humility. Imitate Jesus and Socrates. So that's the list of his 13 virtues. As you can see, it's, it's old English. Um, sounds a little funny, but you can see that he was direct. He didn't waste time. He stuck to his purpose, his mission, and his goals. He made a little chart with all these virtues listed, and he would put a little black dot next to it for each day he was able to accomplish the virtue. So he had this to say about his, his list. Though I never arrived at the perfection I had been so ambitious of obtaining, but fell far short of it, yet I was, by the endeavor, a better and happier man than I otherwise should have been if I had not attempted it. So set high expectations for yourself. Make a list of your virtues, your own personal virtues, and review them daily. Check them in the morning and then review them again at night to see how you did for the day. It literally only takes five minutes. Also, every night before bed, he would reflect on the day. He asked himself, this is a great question, what good he has done today. He was honest with himself, and this helped him grow into the man that we all know. And I quote Ben again here, Be at war with your vices, at peace with your neighbors, and let every new year find you a better man. Great quote. Number four, see the true value of things. He believed that we need to look past the price of a thing and see the true value of it. He believed that you shouldn't give up real things of value like virtue, repose, and liberty for superfluous things like popularity, being a people pleaser, and for the accumulation of stuff, aka materialism. Sure, a purse may cost $400, but what's the true value of that item? Or another example, you may get paid to publish a story, but if it's not in line with your values, then you're just basically selling yourself short. You need to stick to your values. And I quote, when the well is dry, we know the value of water. So don't take things for granted. Number five is to be self-sufficient. Franklin had a do-it-yourself attitude and believed that we should all be able to do things ourselves. He was able to save money in his early years because he made his own meals. And when he opened his own printing press, he made his own machines. Being too reliant on others is a huge vulnerability. That leads to his next lesson, which is another example of being self-sufficient. Reading to improve yourself. So number six, educate yourself and use your time wisely. And I quote, an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. As mentioned earlier, he started Junto and then a library with his friends. From a young age, he was very fond of reading and spent all of his extra money on books. During lunch breaks and after work, he would read. All that reading led to a vast amount of knowledge, which he was able to open doors with in the future. And I quote him again here, This library afforded me the means of improvement by constant study, for which I set apart an hour or two each day. So to be successful in the long term, you need to invest in yourself, both time and money. 
Invest your time and money to improve your important relationships, your health, your career, and your education. He didn't waste his time and money getting drunk. He used his finite time and money to grow, to learn, to prosper. And look at what he was able to accomplish with that mental attitude. He also really believed in sharing that knowledge. He wasn't selfish with it. He invented a ton of stuff and didn't patent anything because improving the lives of others was that reward. That's, that's awesome. Lastly, he believed we should never stop learning. It's a continuous process. Number seven, hard work and diligence pay off. When Ben was stuck and broke in London, he got right to work at the printer's shop. He made some money and he made his way back to America. He took responsibility for it. He took ownership and got it done. He did what he needed to do. He didn't quit or feel sorry for himself. He just did what needed to be done. So the same is true of the printing business he started for himself. He would work from really early, early in the morning and he would work until very late at night. Other people took notice of his hard work and eventually he was rewarded. After many, many years of steady efforts in building his business, he got some large contracts and became very, very successful. He believed in hard work and didn't buy into those get rich schemes of the day. And guess what? They were back in those days too. They're not some new thing. So nothing much has changed, folks. Number eight, associate with people of similar values. Franklin was financially burned once or twice by his so-called friends. Uh, so he learned the hard way that his inner circle of friends should be men of high values like himself, men or women. He did just that with Junto. Ben and his friends, who were intelligent and ambitious men, bounced ideas off of each other, challenged each other, helped each other grow, and raised each other to new heights. Junto was huge for Franklin, and more subgroups spread out throughout the community later on. This club was a place of creativity, and this is where Franklin sharpened his ideas as well as spread them. Number nine, use your time to build wealth and help others. The more wisely you use your time, the more you can build your wealth. Not materialism, but wealth. Franklin retired in 1748 when he was just 42 years old. That would be nice, wouldn't it? This allowed him to do whatever he wanted to do after that, which included reading, conducting experiments, and inventing cool ass shit, man. So for Franklin, the accumulation of money was a means to an end. The accumulation of money meant he had, and I quote, leisure to read, study, make experiments, and converse at large with such ingenious and worthy men as are pleased to honor me with their friendship or acquaintance on such points as may produce something for the common benefit of mankind, uninterrupted by the little cares and fatigues of business. Think of all the great things he did after he retired. If he kept working, you obviously wouldn't be watching this video right now because he wouldn't have done all that cool stuff. He didn't want to live a foo-foo, poo-poo, fancy life. He wanted wealth so he could grow into a noble citizen who was able to serve others in his community. Number 10, wake up early. And I quote, the early morning has gold in its mouth. Franklin allocated three hours each morning, every single morning, just to read, study, plan, and prepare for the day. The morning is a great time to be alone with your thoughts, to read, to journal, to get clear on your goals and your purpose, to exercise, and to plan a productive day. A couple favorite quotes. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. I know you've heard that one before, and that's Franklin. Another one, motivation is when your dreams put on work clothes. Another great quote. Routine and planning were very important to him. It kept him focused. You can do the same thing. Get clear on your goals, prioritize them, and then make a plan to get from A to B and take action. A routine works because it instills healthy habits. He wasn't just about dreaming, he was a man of action. Number 11, have a positive outlook and expect a good outcome. And I quote Ben again here, while we may not be able to control all that happens to us, we can control what happens inside of us. Again, some stoicism there, I like it. And another one of my favorites by him, do not anticipate trouble or worry about what may never happen. Keep in the sunlight. That's an awesome quote. Number 12, learn how to influence people and don't let your ego get in the way. So don't clash with people so quickly. Express yourself in terms of modest diffidence in order to soften your opponent. We all know that if you attack someone, they're going to put up a wall right away. 
they're gonna become defensive and they just won't listen to you anymore. You've been shut down. It's always important to see the other person's perspective. We need to understand why they think the way they do. And you also need to put your guard down and it, you don't always have to be right. Ben was really awesome at doing this. He was great in the art of persuasion and debate as well. Number 13, have a healthy sense of humor and laugh. Pretty good advice. Franklin had a great sense of humor and has several pretty funny quotes. I got one here for you right now. He that displays too often his wife and his wallet is in danger of having both of them borrowed. <laughs> I think we can all agree that having a sense of humor in life is critical to a happy life and peaceful social interactions. If you're funny, you can kind of get away with a lot of stuff. You can get away with saying much more um, than most people. So you're seen as less threatening, more likable, and it really does help to break down any of those social barriers. Number 14, appreciate the little things in life. And I quote Ben, happiness consists more in the small pleasures that occur every day than in the great pieces of good fortune that happen but seldom to a man in the course of his life. And that's so true. It's the little things that count in life. Number 15, be a kid at heart. Keep playing, dreaming, and creating. Ben had this to say, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Another great quote. I love this guy. Number 16, live a life of balance. Franklin insisted that we make time for family, for friends, and for fun. You need to give each part of your life its time. And finally, number 17, focus on what's important. And Ben had this to say, never confuse motion with action. And that is an awesome quote. Just because you're working hard doesn't mean you're being productive. You need to be focused. And on that note, when you're working on something important to you, don't let distractions get in your way. Congrats if you made it through the entire list. It's a long list. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And if you need to read the list again, I've broken it down on my website. I'll link to it below. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.